Tanya from Tanya's Witchy Kitchen. How are you today? What are you gonna do today? Do you have a goal for the day? We'll lead back into that in a sec. But so my son, my middle son is 16 in there and he is working full-time this summer between two jobs and um, he comes home He's cranky. He doesn't want to do anything but, you know, play Xbox with his buddies or watch movies or, you know, just... And I understand it. There is something with the way our society and world is now that makes you so exhausted by the end of the night that you just want to stop and decompress. Like, just stop and clear your head and let everything flow out. And sometimes watching a movie or playing the Xbox or doing stuff like that, or reading a book, takes your mind off reality. That's what I use it for. But anyway, it's a thing. But I hate that he comes home and he's tired and he's complaining about work. And I keep telling my kids, first of all, I've told him, you don't have to work full time this summer. He likes the money. He likes the money. Who wouldn't, right? But you're going to work when you're older, right? I always told my kids this. Like, you don't have to work early. If you have a vehicle and you have a vehicle payment, work to make that payment and pay for gas. But, you know, you need to enjoy life too. And I just feel like, so he has a side business and he's supposed to be working on that side business right now. Um, and he's not because he's tired and I'm like, just maybe work three days at the one job and the one day at the other job and take an extra day off, right? Cause you're going to work. And then, so, okay. And then he comes home complaining about this guy at work and, um, there's always, always some jackass at work. That's another thing I tell my kids. doesn't matter where you work, who you work for. There's always some jackass. Hopefully it's not the boss. Sometimes it is, and that's even worse than just having some person who's a know-it-all or likes to tell you what to do, um, and it's not their job, right? But I mean, that's a thing. If you live in a, or if you work in a workplace where there is none of this drama and, and, um, clickish little groups and you know that would that segregate people well kudos to you because obviously that's where the adults are in this country because it seems like no matter where you work there's always something that there that makes work suck but I mean you have to work even if even even if you don't need the paycheck you gotta do something you can't sit on the couch and watch movies uh, drink champagne and eat bonbons all day. Well, you could, but it would get really, really, really boring. You gotta do something, right? A few years ago, um, I met this person and they were like, I don't live to work. I work to live. Meaning they collected their paycheck to do all the fun things they wanted to do, whether it was go to Europe and see friends or drive down to Vegas, whatever. I don't know. I can't remember what they did. They traveled a lot, you know, but to do the things they wanted to do to enjoy life. And that's hard because you grow up, you have kids, you have this family, you got all these responsibilities and it blows past you and you look around and it's like, I had there, you know, you got to find the passion and the joy and the energy of life. So that's where the goals come in. You know, go back to the goal thing. I'm trying to change my goals because I want to. I feel like I have a very blessed life overall. You know, I've, uh, you know, I've worked, you know. I've worked, I've had jobs, lots of jobs, jack of all trades, that's me. But <laughs> but um, if you don't get to enjoy 
life, you know, it's, is it worth it? You know, I don't think so. I mean, I get to do a lot of things I like to do, but I want to learn. And I think this is a mindset that you have to learn that you want to work to live. But how do you get there? You have to have a goal. That goal, that's the goals, whether they're 18 goals and they're just little baby steps, or it's here's where I'm at, here's where I want to be, and how am I going to get there? You have to have a process. You have to have the steps because you can't just have a little high school glee club uh, board that says, I want to own a mansion when I'm 30. I want to be retired when I'm 40. I want to be, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, the thing is, is I don't even know what, what I'd want to do, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. First of all, I got to get my mindset back into the, I work to live, not live to work. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a specially crafted cup of tea late at night when everybody has gone to bed and it's just peaceful and quiet and you can just you know, let everything out, which is what decompressing is and why so many people come home, you do the supper, you do the dishes and, and six o'clock, seven o'clock, you're done for the night. There's nothing left. So what do you do? You veg out, you read a book, you watch a movie, you play Xbox, you scroll through whatever, Facebook, phone, your phone, whatever, whatever you do to, to decompress. But it's like, why do we have to? Why do we have to? Because we're living to work, not working to live. But, okay, enough of that philosophy. Today we are back to roses and rose hips and all things roses. And we are doing a very short video on witch hazel. That's what we're doing today. It's very simple. And what can you do with witch hazel? Um, if you're infusing botanicals like we are, the witch hazel will not turn a beautiful, pretty pink, red, like, like other things will. So, um, the rose hips will help pull some color and lean it more towards the reddish brown pink side. Okay. That's not even a color, is it? But you know what I mean? Um, but if you take lavender buds, which you would think would be purple, they're actually more of a dark brown color. So they're not really pretty. So don't expect this beautiful pink color unless you decide to pull those botanicals out right away. Like a day. Might get a kind of pinky color. Um, but if you want the full benefit of those botanicals, you leave them in there for two weeks. Definitely. Um, what can you do with it? You can obviously use it as a toner for your skin. Um, toner slash cleanser. Um, you can make your own tux pads. You know, for any woman who has had a baby and had stitches up the wazoo, literally, you can make your own and, and have some... Nobody says you can't use botanicals in it. Um, rose petals would be great. But you just need a, a screw top container. Good quality of the flat cotton balls, okay? So after your infusion is done, pour it in the container on top of the cotton balls, and you have your own tux pads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can use it as an aftershave splash. Some people use it for stretch marks and scars. I've never tried it for that. I got plenty. Um, lotions, you can substitute your water for witch hazel. Very nice, nice thing. You can do that with hydrosols too, but we're just talking witch hazels here. So, um, any cosmetic that you make with water, you can probably substitute witch hazel for, just depending what the cosmetic product is. But like I said, lotions, absolutely. Hyaluronic acid, totally. Micellar water, absolutely. You can substitute all the water in those for witch hazel. It's a really simple, easy to do 
so many qualities and benefits and things to use it for. So three things, dream big, be true to you, you are worth it. And let's go check out the video on Rose Hips and Roses Infused Witch Hazel. Okay, and to our Rose Infused Witch Hazel, we are using Rose Hips and Rose Petals in this. And I'm going to show you, I'll cut a few of these up and I'll leave a few of them whole and go from there. It's no fun to cut these up. If you can buy the rose hip powder, by all means do so. I will be doing that next time. I just wanted the, the I was using these for other things. But, um, oh, I was, I had weighed them out. That's what I was doing. But anyway, um, they're not fun. Like I said, they have the, there's a ton of seeds in there and there's all these really fine hairs that are super itchy and, um, like, don't take my word for it. If you don't believe me, you should try it because, um, yeah, just peeling them like this and look at those little fine hairs. Yeah, they, they, they are itchy. They're, they're horrible. So, <laughs> Maybe this isn't the video that I cut them all up. Maybe this is the one I just did the one. But neither here nor there. Um, just to show you that. They, so I think I had about, I think that's half an ounce of rose hips. Um, I am pretty sure I show you in the end. Otherwise I'll have to go get my notes. <laughs> and then we're using dried. I like, I mean, I do use fresh, um, herbs when when I infuse like for cooking and stuff like that um it's just it doesn't this is witch hazel I do prefer the dried you know infusion um so going to be about I think it's half an ounce yeah yeah because see I was going to take the ones that were right above me but they're not totally dry so I went and got my other ones that are totally dry and so about a half an ounce. Oh, no, I'm going to put some. <laughs> I'm a liar. <laughs> well, they're mostly dry on that side. Um, but anyway, I don't know, guys. Some days I just don't know. Um, so basically all we do then is top it off with our witch hazel. Seriously, that's it. You do want to make sure that all the herbs are covered and not sticking out. So I know I added eight ounces and then I mixed it up and I let it set for a little bit. And I actually added two ounces of witch hazel, um, on two more ounces to make 10 because it, they just, they needed more liquid to, you know, soak up. <laughs> uh, and just give it a good mix. I'm using just a wooden skewer. You want to make sure there's no air bubbles and there are air pockets. You want it, all of it to be uh, touching the witch hazel, you know, infusing as much potent, beautiful, rosy roses as we can get into that witch hazel. And like I said, I topped it off. Um, you probably, like I have 10 ounces. I probably won't get 10 ounces when I strain it because some of those botanicals, you know, soak it up. So just remember that, you know, if you're making something specifically for a certain amount, you might want to go an ounce over just because you're going to lose some of that. So don't forget to label and date it because um, if you run through all these things, you're going to have rose things all over your kitchen and you won't know what's what. <laughs> This is what it looks like after a strained um, a few days. Very beautiful red color. Maybe more of a burnt sienna. <laughs> but very pretty. Very pretty. That's due to the rose hips. But there you have it. Rose hip infused witch hazel. I hope you enjoy this. This is so much fun to use. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for dropping by. I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>